plastic injection preparation here yeah? preparing the mold so first step here is preparing the mold feeding the polymer resin down to the auger the screw is a large open bottomed container an electric motor is responsible for turning the auger inside heated cylinder which feeds the pellets up through the grooves of the auger a gate before mold cavity restricts the flow of the melt into the mold and limits the backflow the pressure created by pushing the forward through the grooves up to the gate also produces heat on the inside of the cylinder which helps to melt the polymer and prepare it for the injection into the mold see here uh, polymer polymer resin is been fed down to the auger is a large open bottomed container a auger is a large bottom container and electric motor is responsible for turning the auger inside the heated cylinder so we have an electric motor or hydraulic motor can also be possible and this electric motor will turn the auger inside a heated cylinder cylinder which is heated which feeds the pellets up to the grooves of the auger so through the basically a groove is an auger no, sorry auger is a groove the auger is a groove and uh, through the grooves of the auger the uh, cylinder will pellets and gate before limits back gate before the mold cavity restricts the flow of melts into the mold and limits the backflow the pressure heated by the pressure created by pushing the forward through Pushing forward, pushing the forward through the grooves up to the gate also produces heat on the inside of the cylinder, which helps to melt the polymer and prepare it for the injection of the injection into the mold. So this is how we are going to prepare the mold in the case of uh, injection mold. So here, uh, resin is been uh, down to the auger in a large bottom container. And it uh, motor will go into turn the auger inside a heated cylinder, and this cylinder will feed the pellets to the grooves. The gate before the mold cavity restricts the flow of the melt into the mold and so limits back. So this is how you are going to prepare the mold in the case of injection plastic injection. Then the next step is <clears throat> injection of polymer melt into the mold. As the auger moves forward. it injects the polymer melt into the mold at a high pressure typically around 10000 to 30000 psi ohms per square inch holds it 
and adds more to ensure the contractual due to pooling and solidification and does not leave gaps in the final form. Eventually, the gate solidifies and uh, isolates the mold from the injection. So in this case, what happens? The polymer which has been uh, melted, which has been uh, forwarded or it will be injected into the mold with a very high pressure. So the pressure range that I have given it is uh, in the range of 10,000 to 30,000 PSI depending upon uh, the quality and the strength of the material means product that will require and uh, it holds, it injects and it holds and adds more melt to ensure that contraction during the cooling and solidification. So once the polymer gets melted and it is been injected and that needs to be folded, folded and it needs to add some more melt because plastic once on cooling it gets contracted. So once it contracts it, you need to have a control over the dimensional uh, uh, accuracies and dimensional tolerances. So therefore, on contraction, the shrinkage of the component. So in order to ensure that contraction due to cooling and solidification, the auger which will keep on moving, it moves by injecting the polymer melt, and it will holds and it will ensure, and it will also add some more uh, plastic material or polymer melt, melted polymer, so that <clears throat> when uh, uh, the melted polymer gets solidified or contracts. Uh, so solidified, it gets contracted, and to make sure, in order to prevent that uh, dimensional instability, so the more amount of polymer will be added, and also it ensures that <coughs> no laps, no gaps will be left in the final form. Eventually, the gate solidifies and isolates the mold from the injector. So this is uh, the second step in the injection molding, plastic injection mold. And the third one is pulling the mold. Molds are typically air or water cooled. Sometimes small holes are bored into the mold that allow a cooling liquid such as water to be circulated. Injection mold cooling consumes about 85% of cycle time of the entire process. So look at that time. So preparing the mold, injecting the polymer into the mold and the last step loading and demolding takes very less time. But the majority of the time in the entire process of plastic injection molding is consumed by pulling of the So a spooling plays a vital role where uh, the molten polymer will get solidified and uh, it will turn it into a desired shape. So these molds can be cooled by two types, either it is by the air cooled or it might be water cooled. And of course, in sometimes uh, small holes are bored into the molds that allow cooling liquid to be circulated. So circulation jockets, so the water, cooling water will be passed and uh, that will go into uh, cool the entire mold because the component should come out of because once it is mixed so the mold cavity. So obtaining, getting it back uh, is only by means of cooling, cooling the mold cap. So that's what he says, injection mold cooling consumes about 85% of the cycle time for the entire course. So remaining 15% for all the other three processes, but uh, majority, almost 85% of the time, cycle time for the entire process has been consumed by this uh, Cooling of the mold. <clears throat> and the last one here is unloading and demolding. After solidification, the clamp holding the two halves of the mold together close is opened, allowing the part to be removed. The injection molding process can then be repeated. Means, so once the cooling of the mold has been done and we have to ensure that. Uh, complete solidification has been over. The clamp holding, the two halves of the mold together are closed is open. In a sense, when you are uh, 
injecting the mold and when you are uh, pulling the mold, the two mold pieces, two, two halves of the mold, molds has been clamped together to be close so that uh, there will be no spill out of the uh, quantum material. So it will be closed and uh, at the end of unfluence, uh, at the end of the, after ensuring the solid, complete solidification that uh, uh, clamp is been opened and uh, you have to remove the part from the mold. Injection molding process can be repeated. This one you just remove it and you can repeat the process. This is regarding the plastic injection mold. <coughs> Another one important step, another important technique in our uh, plastic molding. This is an injection, plastic injection. Then we move on to the next polymer processing technique, poly, poly, what we call it as polymer casting. The polymer casting, the operations what we carry out on the polymeric materials will increase their utility. Conversion of polymeric raw materials will be used in the finished product. In the sense, the main objective of uh, obtaining polymer casting or cast polymers by casting method is to increase the utility of the polymer and also convert the polymeric raw material into a useful finished product. So directly you can get the final products or end products from this polymer casting. So the processes of polymer casting, there are uh, different techniques we are having here. Thermoforming, compression and transfer molding, rotational molding and sintering, extrusion, extrusion based processes, injection molding, low molding, plastic foam molding, like that. There are uh, different uh, techniques are available for us. So we'll start with the uh, uh, thermoform one of the most uh, important techniques uh, in the processing of uh, polymer. It is uh, thermoform, right? <clears throat> of course, before we start the thermoforming, how do you select the processes? So we have listed out uh, so many processes like uh, thermoforming, uh, uh, injection uh, molding, uh, flow molding, uh, compression molding or uh, transfer molding like that. So on what basis you will go and select the process? The selection of a process will depend upon these five important parameters. One is uh, quality and the production rate. Second one is uh, dimensional accuracy and surface finish. Third one is form and detail of the product. Third one, nature of the sorry, next one, nature of the material, and last one is strength of the final. So these are the parameters that needs to be considered while you are selecting the process of polymers using casting technique. Different different processes what we are listed previously will have their own uh, uh, advantages their limitations and their application. And uh, based upon these parameters, quantity and the production rate, so which will go to suit, which method is suitable for uh, uh, more number of uh, products and in a less number, less, less, less time. And which product, which method will go to give better dimensional accuracy and which will be provide a very good surface finish. And what will be the form and detail of the product? So, what is the complexity of the sheet? What is the complexity of the, the dimensional tolerances that needs to be maintained? And what kind of material, the nature of the material, which type of, of polymer material you are using? It is also is a very important thing over here. And uh, finally, the size of the final product. So, what should be the size? Quantity is different. The size. So what should be the total, uh, what we call it as uh, volume of the cell, what should be length, breadth, whatever it might be. So what should be the total volume of the size of the final bar? So based upon all these parameters, so we need to select uh, any one of the process which is suitable for, which will going to satisfy uh, these criteria. This is very important uh, uh, when you are selecting the process for polymer. Right. So, 
let us move on to the next slide phases of polymer processing phases so all different all different uh, techniques what we discussed so casting polymer casting will have heating shaping or forming and cooling the heating to soften or melt the plastic shaping or forming under constraint of some kind like application of a specific pressure means you need to shape it and you have to form it uh, you need to have uh, the application of pressure as what we discussed in the case of a plastic injection molding and uh, the last step is cooling so cooling always very much required for us to get the shape or to retain its shape to maintain uh, uh, the required dimensions required uh, surface finish so all this contributes for uh, the cooling so these are the three important uh, uh phases of polymer process thermoplastic starts as a regular pellets or sheets and can be remelted thermoset starts as a liquid often called resins or powders which need heat for shaping the process so that's what we discussed in the yesterday's class when we discussed uh, the classification of uh, polymers so polymers are uh, Uh, classified based on the thermal response, so where we have uh, thermoplastics and thermosets. So thermosets can be easily molded, whereas thermosets cannot be easily molded. Okay, so this is what we are discussing over here. And uh, next, we move on to the most important thing, what we call it as thermoform. This is one of the plastic or uh, polymer casting technique. Uh, in this process, where thermoplastic polymer sheet, thermoplastic polymer sheet is heated and deformed into a desired shape. Process is heating plastic sheet to the temperature where, in temperature where it softens, stretching the softening polymer against a cold mold surface. Cooling the finished part and trimming excess plastic. So basically, thermoforming uh, is used for thermoplastic polymer sheets, where uh, you are going to heat it and deform. Deform means by cooling. So deformation into a desired shape this is the basic of process of thermoform. Thermoform heating and deform. So here. the different process steps are here heat the plastic sheet in a temperature where it softens so different different uh, thermoplastics will have uh, their melting temperatures and where it softens and once it softens it will be stretched against the cold mold surface and once it is been stretched and it will be cooled Pull the trimming part and the finished part and trimming the excess plastic. So this is the general steps in thermoforming in any kind of thermoforming process. So steps for thermoforming: heating. Heating is accompanied accomplished by radiant electric heater, which is located by at the distance of 125 millimeter from the sheet. So how do you heat the plastic? It is by means of electric uh, radiant electric heater, uh, which will be kept. Uh, At a distance of 125 millimeters or 5 inches from the sheet, from the sheet, forming. After heating, the polymer sheet is converted or formed into a various either air pressure or vacuum or mechanics. So this is a very important. See, in thermal forming, once you heat it by using a radiant electric heater, the next thing is stretching. Or forming. How do you form? How do you make the softened polymer to get stretched over the cold mold surface? So this can be done either air pressure, or vacuum, or by mechanical means. This is a very important thing in the case of the thermal form. Okay. Yeah. So now. the forming process the second step 
we are discussing here. According to the forming technique, thermo formings are of three types. They are vacuum forming, pressure forming, and mechanical thermo forming. A mechanical forming, we can put it as mechanical forming. So these are the three different ways in which you can uh, stretch the softened polymer against the mold surfaces to obtain a desired shape and size. This is the second step. After heating the polymer in a radiant electric heater for a certain temperature so that uh, it melts or it softens. Then the softened polymer needs to be stretched either by means of uh, vacuum treatment or by air pressure or by mechanical force or mechanical means. Based upon that, the forming techniques are classified into vacuum forming, pressure forming, and mechanical force. Let us discuss all these three techniques now, right? one by one. First one is <clears throat> vacuum form. See, in vacuum forming, One of the most uh, earliest method of the oldest method of thermal forming. In vacuum forming, vacuum is created below the preheated plastic sheet to draw sheet into the cold mold cavity. You can see the sketches over there. You can see the sketches over here, right? So this is the mold cavity. This is the mold, and this is the mold cavity, and this is what we are showing is the vacuum holes. Okay. Then we have a plastic sheet here, which is with clamp. Okay, and you will go into press. Okay, you will go into press this, or you will go into move this sheet towards. The mold cavity by means of a vacuum. So look at here over here. See, because of the vacuum, see how it is moving here. So it is been clamped on either side. Okay. So then, by vacuum is created below the preheated plastic sheet. This is a preheated plastic sheet, and vacuum is created over here. So here is the vacuum chambers are available for us. And uh, once you create a vacuum over here, this uh, preheated plastic sheet will be drawn into the mold cavity. Okay, it will be drawn into the mold cavity. Look at here. This is the one what we are showing here. This is the second uh, figure what is showing the preheated plastic sheet has been kept over the mold sheet. And when you apply, or when you apply the vacuum below this, so the sheet will be a totally to be drawn into the mold cut here. So the third diagram, what you can see, so the entire plastic sheet has been drawn into the mold cap. This is because of vacuum. And of course, once it solidifies, you can take it out, and you will go to get see. This is the clamps. You are going to open it up, and the mold will go. This is uh, what we call it as the vacuum form. The basic steps in vacuum forming are <clears throat> a flat plastic sheet is heated by a radiant heater, which is placed on one or either side of the plastic of 125 millimeter distance. The softened sheet is placed over a concave cavity. The vacuum draws the sheet, draws the vacuum draws the sheet into the sheet to the mold cavity. The product is cooled and extra plastic part is stripped off. So this is what we were talking about here. Very simple technique here. So once it has been heated by a radiant electric heater. At 125 millimeters away from the sheet. So the sheet is being placed near the concave mold part. 
you can see this concave moving point over here. Okay. So of course, vacuum can be applied on either side of the problem. No problem. Either side also you can apply the, you can create the vacuum. And uh, once the vacuum is created after placing the sheep over the uh, the mold cavity. See here. And see here, the mold, the plastic sheet, it has been drawn into the mold cavity. It is the shape you can see over here. How it has been get converted into the sheet. And after some time, you can remove that and you can trim the unnecessary or extra plastic material and you can get the final. This is how uh, the vacuum forming will be created, the uh, creation of vacuum usage of vacuum to shape or to make or to draw the plastic into a design shape. Coming to the advantages of uh, <coughs> this type of method or this method of forming, operated comparatively low vacuum pressure, relatively cheap. Generally because the oldest method what they were using, this is a relatively cheapest method and uh, uh, you can operate at very low vacuum pressure. Disadvantage here is uneven wall thickness at the corner of the product, bad finishing or non-uniform plastic concentration. Therefore, the thinnest area occurs at the corner near the clamp. This is the major problem with the vacuum forming is uneven wall thickness. Across the corners, you can see the thickness of the wall or wall thickness is not uniform. And another important thing is it will have a bad surface finish and a non uniform plastic concentration. And the plastic is not being uh, uh, distributed uniformly across the each and every part of the each and every point of the part. So, for these reasons, you will go to get. Uh, the thinnest area means across the corners near the clamp, you can see the area is very thin. So, because of these reasons, is uh, the non uniformity concentration of the plastic and uh, finishing is not good. And because of uh, uneven wall thickness, you will find that uh, this uh, vacuum forming uh, will go to create a product which is uh, having a uneven wall thickness. And uh, in this area, of course, there are these are all some of the disadvantages of vacuum form. Let us move on to the second method. Maybe the second method of forming, what we call it as pressure form. So basically, it is an uh, alternative to the vacuum form. So there, uh, where we have. Uh, So there we had a uh, vacuum is used for uh, stretching the heated, preheated plastic sheet into the mold. So here we use a pressure, a pressure required to create the mold. We have to stretch the plastic sheet into the mold. So this is the diagram what we are having for uh, pressure form. So where you can see the very simple technique here is C. What we are having here is the preheated plastic sheet again. So you can see this is the preheated plastic sheet which is clamped and which is being kept against the mold cavity. This is the mold cavity what we are having. Okay. And through air channel, you will go into pressurize this preheated uh, sheet, plastic sheet, and it will pressurizes such that this preheated plastic sheet will be drawn into the mold cap. So you will go into apply the pressure until it reaches or it will obtain 
the required shape. Required shape. So this is what you can see in the second uh, figure over here. So by just air pressure, so the heated preheated plastic sheet has been pressurized or it will pressed against the mold cavity, and this will continue until this plastic sheet attains or it will go into stretch until it reaches the shape of the mold cavity. So this is the diagram what is for uh, used for uh, pressure form. Let us just discuss here. Here, the air pressure is forced to the preheated uh, sheet into the mold, cold mold. Here, the air pressure of pressure is much higher than the vacuum form. The basic difference between vacuum forming is the heated sheet is pressurized from above the mold cavity. Due to high pressure, the heated sheet can be deformed in fraction of the most important uh, advantage over here is the high production. The, in the case of a vacuum uh, forming, so you are uh, creating the vacuum on either side. But uh, pressure or the vacuum is not so high so that it can uh, stretch or it can uh, deform the plastic sheet into the mold cap. But in this case, what we are doing here is you are applying the pressure on the one side with a high, very high pressure, and that high pressure is makes or it forces a preheated sheet into the mold, cold mold. So that pressure is the uh, magnitude or the intensity of the pressure is very much higher than that of in the case of a vacuum pump. So therefore, the amount of time, the time required for us to Stretch or to force the heated metal sheet into the metal cavity or mold cavity, or mold cavity is very That's why we will say the vacuum for, uh, pressure forming is uh, used for uh, high production rate. Due to high pressure, heated sheet can be deformed in a fraction of second. Within a fraction of second, you can apply the pressure and you can deform the material or you can stretch the material and you can. So this is what uh, the pressure forming. The pressure forming advantage is here is uh, high production rate, uh, efficient for large parts, low cooling costs. Disadvantages is uh, uh, limited shape complexity. And the last one is mechanical form. We look at here three different methods, three different forming methods we have. One is uh, vacuum forming, second one is uh, pressure forming, third one is uh, mechanical forming. See, in mechanical forming, so when you look at here, so we have a plug, a plastic positive mode and the negative mode. Okay, so just like a uh, uh, male part and the female part over here. So here, the heated uh, plastic heated plastic sheet is being placed over the clamps of the negative mode, and you will go into apply or you will go into press the plastic mold against the heated sheet heated sheet plastic here, right? So once you just pause, or once you just move this uh, positive mode, it makes the heated plastic sheet in its deform, and it gets stretched to get to take a shape of a negative mode. Look at here, so how it is happening. So this is the process what we are showing what is happening, and this is the schematic representation. So when you apply a force over here, this uh, positive mode as passes through. It makes this heated metal sheet into a deform, it gets deformed and it will process as it passes, it will get the shape of the if you can see. So what it's showing is it in the red color here. You can see the red color this is the plastic uh, heated plastic mold. What we're going to get it. This is the actual uh, plastic mold, plastic material which will be the shape. Okay. Heat 
heated sheet is placed above the negative mold and mold is closed in shape the sheet in mechanical plumbing air pressure or vacuum pressure does not use to drag the plastic sheet here positive mail and negative molds are brought against the heated plastic sheet forcing it into a sealed sheet air between the die and sheet is evacuated by using a vacuum pump and the sheet conforms to the mold shape form what is cool and heat this is a very simple uh, uh, process of mechanical forming okay so between uh, the die and uh, the sheet the die and the sheet the air gap will be there this air gap can be evacuated by the vacuum shape over here so so that there will not be any uh, entrapment of uh, air inside here it will cause us uh, creates a uh, holes in the holes are non uniformity in the distribution of uh, plastics so therefore so this gap is been evacuated by means of a vacuum okay so this is the basic procedure what we are having in the mechanical forming when it comes to the advantages it will have a better dimensional control opportunity for surface detailing of both the sides of the pots disadvantage is two mold halves are required relatively so when it compared to the vacuum uh, forming and pressure forming so you need to have uh, two molds two mold halves one is a negative mold another one is a positive mold so that always been uh, uh, involving in the expense is relatively costly and when it comes to the advantages so it will have a better dimensional control so you can have uh, any kind of uh, uh, dimensions you can obtain opportunity for surface detailing of both the sides of the box this is one important thing from uh, uh, mechanical form okay so this is what uh, the entire uh, thermo forming methods right so we are completing with this uh, the processing of the the polymers definitely a one question will be there one uh, 60 more question will go to get it from the examination so please prepare starting from classification uh, types of uh, polymers used in native manufacturing and uh, what to call it as <coughs> the processing of uh, polymers everything will be asked in your examination please get prepared okay